When I look back on my childhood, I wonder how I survived it all. It was, of course, a miserable childhood. The happy childhood is hardly worth your while. Worse than the ordinary miserable childhood is the miserable Irish childhood, and worse yet is the miserable Irish Catholic childhood. The poverty, the shiftless, loquacious, alcoholic father, the pious, defeated mother moaning by the fire, pompous priests, bullying schoolmasters, the English, and the terrible things they did to us for 800 long years. Above all, we were wet. Hi, this is Richard Lynch. You're watching ilovelimerick.com and we are about to do a tour of Angela's Ashes in honor of Frank and Malachy McCourt. We were actually at Frank and Malachy's school in Leamy House where we went to school and they were four and five years of age and I am here with Mick O'Donnell, the official Angela's Ashes Limerick tour guide. Well, Mick, how's it going? Very well. Yes, we're here in a classroom in Leamy's National School where Frank and Malachy went to school, accompanied by some of Frank's uh, former schoolmates. Uh, we're going to do a tour of the locations that Frank mentioned in the book. Uh, Frank went to school here at the age of five. Maliki is four. When they came in, the pupils inside didn't know what to make of them, of course, with their American accents. What are they? Gangsters? Cowboys? Indians? But nevertheless, he stayed here from uh, the age of five to 14, meeting the friends that you'll see today on camera. Uh, lovely gentlemen. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of meeting them. It's wonderful. So I think possibly we'll go now and have a look at the locations that Frank has mentioned and speak about the events that Frank uh, wrote about uh, at those places. When Frank was in hospital, he had typhoid fever. He's there very sick, not even knowing where he is. But gradually getting better, he meets, of course, one of the girls. Uh, it wasn't Teresa Carmody who had, he had the excitement with. This is Patricia Madigan. That, uh, he met in the hospital, but gradually he's getting better. And how does he know he's getting better? Frank tells the story in the book. He's in bed one day, very sick. The doctor came along, uh, got the chair, reached over uh, to take Frank's pulse. And reaching over, the doctor farted. And Frank <laughs> knew that he was better now because he said, no doctor would fart in front of a dying child. <laughs> arrive now at Barrington Lane. This is where the whole story started from. Uh, Barrington Lane is where the, Mac the McCourts and the Sheehans actually lived. When the McCourts came from America, they went into a house, a little house, the Sheehan house. And when they went in, inside you had um, Uncle Pat. They called him the Abbot, Ab Sheehan. Also Aunt Aggie. Now Aunt Aggie is married to Pat Keating. And Pat Keating and Aunt Aggie had a fight. He called her a big fat cow, so she ran home. That's why she's in the house. But the house is too small. It's actually gone now. And uh, they went from there then to Windmill Street and various other places, which I normally speak about on the tour. But this is where the whole story started from. Angela this left lane here. here. This lane here, Barrington Lane. Angela left here at the age of 17, went off to America, met Maliki McCourt and got married. Had the children, but things eventually went wrong. And then Mrs. Sheehan sent on the fair for all the McCourts to come to Limerick. And arriving back here, the story starts from, from here. Uh, the McCourts, of course, lived here. After uh, moving to various places, Frank came back here to live again in Barrington Lane with Ab Sheehan. Stayed here until the age of uh, 19 in 1949. He went back to America, where he joined the American Air Force. He completed his term of enlistment and then studied for the, to be a teacher, qualified, and thought then in and around New York all the rest of his career, and then came Angela's Ashes. We know the story after that, the success. Can you imagine a Pulitzer Prize winner from a lane like that in Limerick? Fantastic. Can I ask you a question? People, you know, people say things like a lot of Angela's Ashes isn't 
true, but it's told through the stories of the eyes of a child, obviously. But it was pretty bleak back then, it wasn't was. it? It, it was. Yeah. No question about that. It was. It was bleak and it was it were tough times, but there were also very happy times. Yeah. You know, yeah. We had great people that, that lived very, very close to the bone, but they, they survived and they, great people come out of these lanes yeah. eventually. Was your own family very poor when you were kids? We were. You were? We were yeah. And all where my, did you, where did you had live, a, Billy? I had a bicycle shop here. Oh, your dad had a bike shop? <laughs> yeah. Where did you live? Did you live around Up here? Up the lane. Pillars, the pillars of the lane were there. Some pillars. You lived up here? I lived up there, number, ah. number 13. What was rotten pigs in What do you saw all rare pigs in the, in the back of the house? There's a real big pigs. <laughs> Here in the... Uh... And one woman had a pig inside of the shed, a stone shed. And the pig got so big from eating him inside, or eating. That one went to get him out. We had to knock the wall down, the shed, for to get the pig out. <laughs> <laughs> and take him to the factory. That's right. Go to the factory then. <laughs> We're on Barrick Hill. Right. Roden Lane is a lane that ran off Barrick Hill. The lane is gone, built over it by new houses now. But the McCourts left Hearthstone Street, where the second twin Eugene had died, moved into that little house in the lane. Angela went into the house and uh, came back out as a shed. She pushed open the door of the shed, looked in. Maliki, look, our very own toilet. Until the following morning, there's a guy walking down the lane with his bucket, empties the contents in. Angela saw this. Hey, mister, why are you emptying the contents of your bucket into our toilet? Jesus, missus, that toilet for all the lane. And that's how it used to be in Limerick at that time. People are amazed about that. They had to queue up and, you know, take, take their... Their turns. Take, a take their turn, take uh, yeah. their numbers. <laughs> so that's where the number one and two came from? Yeah, and not alone <laughs> that, worse still it was. They always brought a piece of, piece of paper, the, the newspaper in their pocket, and they could use it. Wow. You know? wow. Well, that was a luxury that time. How many years ago is that? Oh, jeez, but he'd, he'd know. Um, How many years ago is that? Know. Well, we know the lane was taken down in the mid 80s, and certainly that was in the, in the 40s. 40s and 50s, yes. which was around the then. Yeah, yeah, the early 50s, yeah. late 40s. Billy is saying Frank must be looking down on us just because just as we reach the place where the lane stood, it starts to rain. So he must be looking down on us from the heavens right now. It was right here. Right, yeah, right here, right about here. Right here, the lane. Yeah. Was wow. house? No, the house was the last house on the left. This was the very, very, very first home of Frank and Malky McCourt was Windmill Street right here. Is the street the same as it used Absolutely to be? Absolutely the same. Yeah, the street different. hasn't changed. The street hasn't changed at all? Not at all, as it is. But look Which around. Which house is it? Which house is it? Now, there's a bit of controversy about that because Frank Which told me that uh, on the left-hand side, Aunt Aggie and Pat Keating lived in a house on the corner. And they, and they lived on the right-hand side. But uh, Malky and Frank were a bit confused about that. Malky said that uh, no, uh, they lived on the corner, and Aunt Aggie lived on the right-hand side. No, Aggie was on the left. Aggie was on the left there, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is where Ollie died. Who's Ollie? And died. Ollie is the first twin. Oh. The twins, Ollie and Eugene. But Ollie died in that house in Windmill Street, and they moved then very shortly afterwards, and they go to a, a house in Hearthstone Street, and it's there the second twin, Eugene, died. And he died of pneumonia the same as Ollie in Windmill Street. That gives you an idea of the conditions uh, people lived in at the time in Limerick. How many years ago is that? 60, 70 years ago? <laughs> well, Frank at the time came to Limerick when he was only about three years of age, but what a memory he can remember all of that. So he would have only been probably four years of age when he lived here and in Hearthstone Street as well. And, and the street's still the same? The street is still the very same. Oh Hasn't changed. But if you look now, you'll see those uh, television discs. That'll tell you how things change. Oh, 
We are here at South's Pub where Frank and Maliki used to enjoy a pint or two. Can you tell us the story about well, South's Pub? Well, yes, I can. Frank said the uh, tradition was when a boy would reach the age of 16, his father would t take him for his first pint. But his father is gone, so it was Pack Eating that took Frank for his first pint. They went into South's, Frank and uh, his uncle Pa. Pa bought the pint. Frank drank it. He bought him a second one. He's halfway down and he's drunk. And Pa said to him, go home boy, you're useless. So Frank left South by the back door, went home, and it was actually then that he, he had a fight with his mother because she's having the excitement with that guy, Lemon Griffin. And he went back then to live in Barrington Lane with Ab Sheehan. He left the house. Right over here, there's some photos of Frank McCourt in the snug. Oh, here it is, look. Angela's Ashes. This is where Frank McCourt had his very first pint in Limerick City when he was 16 years of age, got Langer's drunk and had to be taken home and put to bed. So we are here inside St. Joseph's Church where Frank and Malachi made their communion confirmation. And Mick, can you a story about well, this church? Frank place? said actually when he made his first communion here, he said all the boys had a big sin to tell. And uh, Frank's big sin was the story of Coo Cullen. But he also said that uh, Willie Harold, one of the guys that was making his communion, he had a big sin as well. And uh, Willie's sin was he looked at his sister's naked body. Now, I met Willie after the uh, film came out, and after the book came out, of course. And I said, Willie, you're a star. Frank McCourt, decent man, he made you a star. You're mentioned in Angela's Ashes. And Willie said, Mick, I'll kill him when I see him. I'll just kill him. I said, what do you mean he made you a star? Do you see what he said me about, about me in that book? He said, I looked at my sister's naked body. I never had a sister. <laughs> he destroyed me, he said, he destroyed me. So we've done our tour of um, Angela's Ashes and Mick was good enough to walk us around and show us some of the sights of Malachi and Frank's childhood and we're back at Leamy House now and we're just going to have a chat and catch up all about all these wonderful people that have come together in honour of Frank and Malachi. You know, there's always been a lot of controversy about this book. There's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of ill feeling even amongst Limerick people about the contents of the book and the truth of the book. But I always say it's to the eyes of a four, five, six, seven year old child. So of course there's going to be some sort of embellishment, right? But were you all happy when you read the book or was there any bad feeling, like bad feelings amongst any of you when you read no, the book? No, not so. Well, I, I thought it was, uh, it was all true anyway. You, know? you yeah. thought it was all true? Yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Before I, I read the book, uh, people were coming up to me and they were saying, oh, jeez, what do you think of that book? Do you know? Yeah. I said, I haven't read it yet. Yeah. So I can't comment on it. And, jeez, uh, I got so many people coming up to me that I said, I could only break that fucker's jaw. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Frank is fucking job. Yeah. Well, this was your cousin they were talking about. Yeah. 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 Frank. Yeah. So I, I read the set down, I read the book anyway. And uh, I, I read it twice over, actually. I didn't see anything insulting about it. Sad thing is, Frank told me last year he was going to spend six months of his uh, time in Limerick and six mm. months in America. That was his plan. Yeah. And he also said he was going to write about what happened to him since Angela's Ashes. He came from the, one of the worst schools in Ireland, Leamy School. He came oh. over the lane, he wrote a book, a first book, and it sold 10 million copies in 28 languages. I said, so I think that was only done once before. That was done with Margaret Mitchell in Gone with the Wind. So that's what I have to say now.